Welcome to Main Street Podcast, an opportunity to talk to Idaho's elected leaders about the issues that matter to you. Welcome to the Main Street Podcast. We're here with one of our favorites, Senator Treg Burnt out of District 21, former Meridian City Councilman turned state senator. Senator, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Yeah, we're, we know how busy you are today, so we appreciate you shaving off a little bit of time for us. And I thought it would actually be helpful for our listeners to kick off with a little bit of a day in the life of Treg. Why don't you walk us through what today's looked like for you so far? Well, just ask my wife, you know, uh, sh- she'll tell you that it's not quite as exciting as uh, as we all make it out to be. But before I start, I got to say there's not a better better dressed podcaster on the interwebs than than Brennan. So you always look fresh, my man. You always look good. You're kind, that's the sound bite we're going to use. Unfortunately, my, my hairline, I'm turning into a Joe Rogan podcaster by the looks of it, but uh, you're kind. Well, uh, a day in the life of, of, of uh, Senator Burnt. So this morning I was at the Capitol probably about 6 a.m. I, I make uh, the first thing I do is I, I, I make sure that um, my, my day job, the job that my wife um, refers to as the, 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 the job that pays the bills, I, I make sure that we're good to go. Usually it doesn't take that long, but I just make, make sure that my team is in order and we're, we're, we're ready to roll for the day. But after that, I get to the bills. I want to make sure that before I get to the floor, whether it's in committee or the floor, that I'm well prepared and and I have questions, if, if questions, or if I'm going to prepare a debate, that that's taken care of and well organized. Um, throughout the day, uh, a lot of meetings. There's a lot going on uh, at the Capitol, especially right now. Things are starting to heat up. A lot of big bills that have been worked on throughout the session are coming through. And so that's what I spend a lot of my time with and, and uh, preparing again at the end of the day, preparing for the next day. I currently sit, I, I'm, I'm a vice chair of state affairs and I sit on local gov. So we, uh, we, we're, we're going to hear a lot of these bills that are, that may be a little bit more high profile. So uh, it's, it's important that I'm prepared. Yeah, I watched a section of your committee today in state affairs. And um, I mean, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you had there testifying and, and what that looked like? Are you talking about this morning? Yes. So um, this morning we had uh, the, uh, um, the the fire wing folks from, from Mountain Home Air, Air Force Base, the airmen. They gave an unclassified briefing to us this morning about uh, foreign affairs. Uh, we we had a bunch of bills we that dealt everything from cash to to elections and so uh, this morning was was quite interesting and it lasted a while so it was good yeah and we can we can feel the temperature heating up and we as we talk to some of your colleagues on on both sides of the Capitol uh, there are a lot of big bills a lot coming so we're gonna try to get through as many as we can today and get your opinion on some things but let's go back as recent as yesterday the Senate voted for a joint memorial, uh, 102. And it, I mean, uh, you're probably gonna have to walk us through what a joint memorial is and does. This one is related to immigration. And shockingly, when you saw the vote count, it was like 30 to four, if I remember right, which seems a little wild that you had so much consensus. Why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about what this memorial is about and, and what kind of effects you're hoping it has? Right. So this this memorial just calls on the federal government to get their crap together when it comes to the southern border, to be completely honest with you. A lot of the issues that we're that we're facing and we have in our country right now can be, um, you know, it has to do with the the, the, the southern border, right? whether it's fentanyl, whether it's a, a, a lot of folks coming over that that require help and assistance that that. It's just it's just creating uh, you know definite problems in in uh, some of our cities across the nation. So, um, all all Chairman Guthrie was was uh, doing was just saying, hey, this fix our border. Uh, this isn't amnesty. Um, let's uh, make sure that uh, we take care of our uh, ag economy because uh, foreign born labor is a, a crucial part to our uh, foreign born. Um, um, labor and, and also uh, making sure that we do it in a legal way. And so very simple bill. I, it got a lot of debate, almost an hour's worth of, worth of debate. But at the end uh, of the day, um, it passed at 30 to 4. So uh, congratulations to Chairman Guthrie for making some tweaks from last year's memorial. And I think it's uh, I think you did a good job. So very clear message to the Biden administration, as well as, you know, um, 
our legislative branch that we need to get some stuff done on the border and get that sorted out all the way from the gem state to DC, a very clear message. Yeah. Great. An another piece of legislation that is coming that you've championed, um, 1274, it's a piece of legislation surrounding diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I don't know if, uh, if you should be the poster child for diversity, but you, you are in this legislation. And, um, I think a lot of the public and Idahoans in general have uh, strong opinions about DEI. Why don't you tell us what you're trying to do in this space? Right. I mean, quite simply, uh, 1274 makes the hiring and admission decisions at any public post-secondary educational institution in our state be made on merit. As we all know, we live in a meritocracy and we have sort of, in my opinion, strayed a little bit away from that. This brings the conversation back to merit where it needs to be. Um, also takes away some diversity statements. And if you go to the bill, um, talks, you know, in, anywhere from race, sex, color, ethnicity, sexual orientation, we take that out of the equation. We focus on merit. Um, one last one, one more thing about that, though, this this is anything new uh, per se. This was um, basically what this bill does is put into statute. It was codified by the State Board of Education this past summer. So maybe maybe give us a glimpse into why this was one that you wanted to champion. What what got your fingerprints on this issue? You know, I, I we have really good relate. I have really good relationship with uh, with uh, um, some of our higher ed um, institutions. Uh, Gordon Jones at CWI, some good folks at uh, um, Boise State and Idaho State. I'm a, I'm a proud Bengal alum. Um, they they actually uh, were heavily involved with the, the the talks and the discussion regarding this bill. Um, they all realize that that higher ed is some, you know, uh, at a national level, not so much here in our in our state, but um, has gotten into identity politics probably a little bit more than than they should have. And we're just being proactive, making sure that we stay on the right track here in Idaho. And I, I love this simplicity that comes from let's just make it on merit and let the best person who can do the job do the job. We, we all understand that diversity is incredibly important. We all we all want to be inclusive in, in every way possible. Those aren't the issues. The issues are um, let's, uh, uh, we're making decisions that aren't based on merit and who deserves to be hired or or um, admitted into our higher ed institutions. Let's focus on what really matters. Those and that's in, in my opinion, it's merit. Yeah. For sure. Speaking of things that really matter, I know that the school facilities issue, we talked to Chairman Len about it, is one that's also very important to you. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about where that's at and uh, and, and talk about your strong feelings on updating some of these facilities in our state? Right. So this, this isn't anything new for me personally. I remember five, six, seven years ago when I was first uh, elected on the Meridian City Council, for, former mayor Tammy DeVeard, and I would have long conversations about how the state and their lack of um, skin of the game as, as it relates to, to school uh, or facilities funding, funding for facilities in, in our state. Um, it wasn't, I think, was it, you, you probably can remember, but in 2005, 2006, the Idaho Supreme Court uh, mandated that the state um, get in the game when it comes to uh, funding facilities. And so we have a constitutional mandate to fund public education. I believe that also has to do with facilities. We have facilities that are crumbling across the, the state. I, recently, I was, I was talking to my dear mother in Pocatello, and there's a high school, a Highland High School, uh, didn't completely burn down to the ground, but 30, 40 percent of the school burnt down and they couldn't even pass a bond to fix it. And so I think it's incredibly important that the state uh, get involved with uh, funding facilities. Uh, it's, it, it's our constitutional mandate. And I think that it indirectly uh, lowers property taxes because the more we are funding schools, that that's less money that 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 different school districts across the state are going to ask for, for for bonds. Yeah. For the record, in 2005, when that decision was made, I was in fifth grade, so just want to make it very clear that I'm significantly younger than you. Uh, but in terms of this uh, this push to get these facilities updated, 
where do you see it going? Are, are we going to be able to get some stuff done before the, the session ends here shortly? Absolutely. And, and at Main Street, Idaho, we're going to push uh, very hard in support of school facilities. You've had other Main Streeters on your on your podcast talk about how important this is to their school districts and different parts of the state. Uh, we stand with the governor uh, regarding st- school facilities, and we're going to do our very best to get this across the line. It's, it's really important. It's important for our economy as well. I think there can be an argument made that it will strengthen our economy as well. Absolutely. Uh, in that uh, same spirit, when you talked to us five months ago, you said that what you were most proud of accomplishing the previous session was launch. And as that has come down, I think it's only grown in popularity amongst Idahoans as they've got a better understanding of what that will do for seniors in high school who are looking for options, but also what it will do for industry in Idaho, who is bleeding for workforce. Talk to us about launch and where we're at there. Any any local uh, chamber of commerce supports this. This isn't this isn't about big industry, although very important. This is this is about supporting Main Street business. This is Meridian Chamber of Commerce um, support that we're talking about. I, there is there is no doubt that anyone that talks to me or even my co-chair with Main Street Representative Wheeler and Idaho Falls, we're huge advocates for career technical education. Kiddos, students who are graduating from high school need more options. And I believe that launch is going to catapult them into um, the next phase of their lives. And in, in return, Idaho business, the Idaho economy will benefit greatly. One thing about launch, though, we're experiencing a ton of growth in Idaho. We all know it. You know, people coming here from, you know, California, Oregon, Washington and other parts of um, the nation. And with that comes issues, you know, and and if you drive down the road, there's there's some transportation issues. There's some labor issues. But specifically uh, with labor, launch is going to help with this problem whether you're a welder, whether you're a nurse, what do you want to get into IT, whatever the case may be, Idaho business, Idaho industry, we need a more qualified workforce and we need more people in the pipeline to be able to get where we need to go and to um, help grow our, our, our economy and, and help local business. It really is that simple. Yeah, Governor Little often says that change is inevitable, but reacting and adapting to it is a choice. And uh, this is Idaho's opportunity to adapt to the choice. But the the question is, is it going to get shortchanged in the appropriation process? You know, again, I've I've heard that we're going to be okay, but we have some good people um, in JFAC that that are going to... uh, Fight and they're going to advocate and they're going to make sure that that uh, these funds are uh, ap- appropriated. As we stand now, I, I don't I don't see problems from what I've heard, but you know it's the Idaho State Legislature and we all know what's happened with JFAC this year. It's been quite interesting. So, but I'm the glass half full type of a guy, so I always I always uh, I'm always hopeful. We love the optimism. So you hinted at the beginning of a, the temperature heating up, more bills coming, bigger bills coming. I, I always describe the legislature like a, uh, respectfully, like a child who's told to clean their room. And they're really good at getting it cleaned five minutes before they're asking to go see a friend. So the time's coming for the legislature to ask to go see a friend. What, what are you seeing coming? What, give us the insider baseball on these next few weeks. Hopefully, we're going to see some sane legislation. Uh, it's it's been quite tame in the in the Senate so far, other than some JFAC issues that we've experienced this this session. It's it's been pretty mellow. A lot of a lot of the debate and a lot of the the ruckus has happened in the House. Um, you know, you're, we're so I hope I hope that reasonable minds will prevail in in, in legislation. But you're going to see some um, some debates on choice. Um, education choice with refundable tax credits. You're going to see facilities come through. Um, uh, I, there's there's going to be a lot of big ones coming through. But it, it, w- for me, I've always I've never understood why we 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 wait until the very end, a week or two prior to session ending, to tackle some of these issues. 
if it were me, what I would want to, to take place is to almost formulate a, um, um, a committee of, of trade partners and, and, and good folks across the state, the state legislators, um, folks who um, can, can, can vet good bills and, and maybe even um, tackle these huge issues prior to session starting. So when we start a session in January, um, we already know what the bills are. They've been vetted by different partners throughout the state, both in the legislature, um, in all um, branches of, of government, and also partners uh, that 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 can give good advice. And then when we start uh, the session, we, um, we we already know what those bills are. They've already been vetted, and we can concentrate on getting these 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 big bills through quicker and with more debate. I think I think it would benefit the state in the process a lot better if we, we were to approach some of these bigger bills that way. Yeah, some some long term planning and perspective is always helpful. W- when we talked last, you quoted um, you were reading "Love Your Enemies" by Arthur Brooks, and you quoted the line about when the elephants fight, the grass suffers. I know we're not done with the session yet, but you've, you're an optimistic guy. You've pointed out a lot of things. We didn't even talk about fentanyl yet. Uh, the bill to address that. It, it uh, am I wrong to think that the elephants aren't as fighting as much, or if they're doing it, the grass isn't suffering as much. Well, what's your read on the session so far? I always, I always feel like some of these fringy approach to to legislation, they they rarely translate, and 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 I in my experience so far. In the five whole months that I've been in this building, which isn't a lot, uh, reasonable minds almost always prevail, and and I my door is always open, and uh, I really appreciate the respect and the dialogue, uh, the respectful dialogue that takes place um, when 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 folks who may or may not have um, that may or may not be on the same page come together and 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 create and craft legis- reasonable legislation. One, one example that comes to mind is the library bill. You had you had uh, rep- uh, Representative Crane that has brought the bill, um, that brought this library bill last year, and you have uh, Senator Schroeder on our side. They, they weren't close in how, in, in their ideas regarding the best way and the most effective way to craft library legislation, but they came together in, in, a, in the past month, they've sat down and they, they've had respectful dialogue and they've really came to a great, I wouldn't call it a compromise, but they've really, they've done a really good job of, of, of doing what's best for li- libraries and librarians across the state. And, and, I, and I think if we were to use that model of respect, um, I, I think that you'd see that a lot more would get done. Yeah, and the, the process you talk about is, uh, I think, a portion of the answer to my next question. Because, again, when you were with us last time, you you described one of the lenses you use on which you decide good policy and how to vote is whether or not it's an Idaho solution. You said, you know, your voters, the public, have told you that Idahoans want Idaho solutions, and we didn't have time um, because Representative Wheeler that was with you just talked the whole time. But if we would have had time, we would have asked. What constitutes an Idaho solution versus a California solution or a DC solution? That's really interesting. I, you know, I, I, I was, I was in a, I was in a local gov committee meeting recently, and there was a gentleman who was testifying, um, and this bill had to do with, um, and I want to get, I don't want to call anyone out. I don't want to get too far into the weeds with this bill, but it had to do with urban animals, and this, and this gentleman was calling in from Colorado. And he was testifying about if we didn't, you know, address some of the things about this bill that rodeo animals would be at risk and that rodeos would no longer, uh, you know, be in, in, in Idaho. And I, and, I, and I was scratching my head. And the first question that came to my mind and I asked, I'm like, have you ever been to Idaho? And I'm like, and, 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 and everyone laughed. I didn't mean it to be funny, but that's what we're talking about. This, this gentleman you know, thought that that rodeos in Idaho were at risk. And that's not an Idaho solution. That's not even an Idaho problem. And just because you have 
crazy policies in California and Oregon, Washington, maybe even Colorado and other places across the nation doesn't mean that we subscribe to that philosophy and ideology here in the great state of Idaho. Um, we're still a hundred percent country, you know, we're very conservative and we're one of the most conservative states in the union. And just because it's happening there doesn't mean that it's happening here. And and we and when we concentrate too much on these these issues that aren't Idaho solutions, it takes away the focus from what really matters. And 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 we we don't and, and we don't address the real main street issues that real main street Idahoans want to address. And so that that's my perspective on it. I, I just think that sometimes we uh we focus too much on on uh, on issues that aren't aren't quite an emergency right now in our state. Yeah, that's you know, and I I think you you've hit it dead on. Where families at home, when the property tax bill comes in, or when it's time for their kids to go to a school that's got raw sewage running underneath it, they they don't look at that with a pair of glasses of which member of House or Senate leadership supported this, or is this a Republican or a Democrat? They just want solutions. And I, I love the perspective of we're going to go in as elected leaders and execute and get stuff done because that's what we were elected to do. Take the politics out of it. Take the R out of it. Take take the D out of it. We th- let's just do what's best. Another great example. I I, I have another bill that's a, it's a, has to do with local elections. A couple of years ago, when when we passed a, a bill that said that if you are a city that has more than hundred thousand people, you were going to you know divide up into districts. Well. Unbeknownst to those folks who who passed that legislation, that they also said that if you are in one of those district districts and you and you uh, and, and you, if you run for city council and you run unopposed, you're not going to be on the ballot at all. And so, me and uh, Senator Wintro, who's a Democrat in Boise, we said, "Hey, you know, everyone needs to be on the ballot, regardless of whether or not." you're opposed or unopposed people need to know who their representation uh the 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 representatives are in the respective districts and it's a bipartisan bill and that's a solution to a real problem in cities that are a hundred thousand people or more and a republican and a democrat came together to get it done and if you're a main street idahoan that's the type of solutions that we're looking for whether it is property taxes whether it is education whether whether it is health care, wh- whatever the case may be, it's the approach that people want. People are so sick and tired of 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 a fringy approach to what and on how we uh, legislate that, you know, they just get disenfranchised with government. And they hate it. Yeah, we need to we need to spend a whole episode just talking about disenfranchising voters and uh, why our voter turnout so low and how people have just walked away from the institution that we can't do it today, but we will. You know, Senator, we're going to do something today, though, that we've never done on the podcast before. You want me to dance? <laughs> Worse. We're, we're going to take a question from a listener. Now, I got a text this morning from a listener. Um, and are you comfortable ask, answering a question that a listener put in? I hope so. I, I you know, I'm sweating bullets. It was uh, from one Josh Wheeler out of Ammon. He would like to know what your preference is on skiing versus snowboarding. Please. Snowboarding. Give me a break. He knows yeah, that. So-, <laughs> so for the rest of us that were outside of the inside joke, apparently Representative Wheeler and Senator Burt um, disagree on skiing versus snowboarding. That's a, a regular uh, argument in your household, apparently. All kidding aside, I love that guy with my heart. He's the best guy. Ever, but I... Uh, it, go, going up the mountains and, and shredding a little pow pow, it's healthy for my soul. It's where I decompress. I say a little prayer at the top, and uh, and I hope I get to the bottom. And so far, so good. I, and I hear I was thinking snowboarding was a young man's sport, and you're up there. Listen, they don't, they don't. You know, this this gray is just uh, camouflage. That's all it is. <laughs> Senator, we know you've got to run to the Senate floor right now. You're going to go debate. You're going to go vote. And you're going to keep doing the good work you're doing. We hope you know how much we appreciate you taking aside some time for us. And we'd love to have you back after the session's over. I, and I, I, would, I would love to. And Brandon, you do such a great job. This podcast has taken off. It, it, it reaches so many people across the state. And it, it's, it's affecting um, 
who we are and, and what and what we do in this in this building. So thank you so much for your good work. Absolutely. Thank you, Senator. Until next time. My pleasure.